Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to do validation inside Filament 3. So let's get started. So we already covered how to create forms and how to do layouts, but how can you do validation? For example, here my title is two characters. I want to make sure it's always minimum three characters, or I want to add validation, unique validation for this slug. So how can we do that? Now, there are two ways of doing validation or two primary ways. So the first way is on all your fields or e these inputs that we have or form inputs, you can go ahead and call a method called rules. And as the name suggests, this rules accepts your validation rules. And you can do either pass an array or pass in string. And the string will accept any laudable validation rules. So here, for example, I can say min three, max, let's say 10, okay? And this will go ahead and add the validation for us. And since we are we are using LiveWire or Filament uses LiveWire, I don't even need to reload. I can just say save and minimum three characters. And for the maximum of 10, let me type some stuff in. And boom, we have these validations. Now, one more thing we do have, guys, is this can also pass in an array. So let's say if I did an array, I can say min three, max five, okay? Let's try it out. And as you can see, this number became five. So you also have the ability to pass in custom validation rules. So if you have a custom validation rule, you can just pass it in here the same way you would do with Laudable. Now, alternatively, guys, uh, Filament also provides some methods for these validation rules. So for example, we have something like in, right? You can say uh, there is an in validation method, right? And you can pass in a list of items, right? So let's say, I think you can say it, hi, and he, okay? Something like that. So this is how it would work with Laudable. And if I try and do a test, let's say I say all of them are two characters. So let's put the minimum to two. And I say hi, it saves. But if I say EI, it tells us the select the title is invalid, right? And that's because it's not in the list. And let me get rid of these so you guys can make sure it does work. As you can see, it says invalid. But if I say he, it should save, right? Well, for something like in, you can actually, instead of do, using these rules, you can just say, call a method called in and pass in an array, right? Here I can say test, hello. And it works exactly identical to using that rules method, right? So let's do a quick reload. Now, if I save, obviously it says title is invalid. Here I can say hello and it saves, right? So these methods are also available, right? And re required is a, in a, an example of it, right? We didn't have to use rules required. We just said required. Now, in order to get the list of all of these guys, you can go ahead and open up the Filament website and at the top right, search validation. I have already done this before the video. I was just messing around. And if you scroll down, you can list, see the list of all available rules, okay? There is active URL, there is after, and some of these except arguments, the same ones that they you have the option in Laravel. There is after or equal. Now, there's too many of them. I can't really cover every single one of them. But if you want to use a rule, check the list. Or if you are on PHP Storm or VS Code, just type the name in, you know, if it recommends it to you, then it exists, okay? <laughs> Simple stuff. Uh, there is IP, there is JSON, less than. Again, required, which we have already used. There is required if, required unless, all of these rules are available here. Even you can use regex if you want or same. Okay, guys, simple stuff. There's also string and unique. So in our case, for example, I don't want the in, obviously. Uh, what I would like to do is I want to add a unique rule to our slug. So I can just say unique. And this will go ahead and ensure our slug is unique. Now, it does have one issue. When we are updating, we want to ignore the current slug. So we can actually go ahead and pass that as an argument. If you look at the function definition, there is a ignore record. I can just go ahead and say ignore record true, right? So this is exactly identical to how it works in Laravel. And now it saves for us. And so it's super simple, guys. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to add required for all of my fields, even for category. So let's go ahead and do that, required. Now for the checkboxes, right now, if I uncheck it, we can't actually save. It says, please tick the checkbox. 
So we actually need to get rid of this required over here. Okay. I do need to reload the page. Now it works. Now for the tags, uh, I already have the required, so I don't need to add it. For the image, I do want it to be optional, so I'm not going to add that. You could maybe add nullable if you guys like. It is in the list of, uh, I believe, the validation rules, right? So you can add that if you would like. It's up to you. Now for text inputs, text inputs have some additional values you can use. Uh, you can use something called min length and max length, and this can be used to control the length of your your strings. And again, guys, this is only available on text inputs, so it's not for all of them. And if you look at the here, there is no max length. So it's only available for uh, text input columns, just something to keep in mind. Am I on text input? I'm not. Text input. So this is only for text inputs. But if you would like, you can add minimum and maximum length. Okay, so let's say 3 and 10. And if we, we do need to reload for this one, if I go back to two, it tells us three characters. Now, this is also doing front-end validation, if you guys notice. Previously, when I did the rules, it only did back-end val validation. But now that I'm doing max length and min length, it's also doing front-end validation. So it's very nice. And now it works. There is also min value and max value if you have, like, numbers. And in order to make the input numeric, you can just say numeric, okay? Numeric. Just something to keep in mind. I will cover these as we go along, but you can go ahead and do that. And it's going to become numeric as well, okay? And for numbers, you can say mean value and max value to control how big the number should be, okay? So for example, for us, it's 3. If I do 1 and I try to save, it tells us it should be at least 3 or greater, guys. So this is how you do validation, guys. As always, it is important you check out the form builder section. So if you go, for example, under text input, there is a numeric, as I just covered, email. Some input types have their own validation specific to them. Or you may not consider validation, but they have their own custom properties. So if you guys would like, I can make videos on each of them. But for example, there is one for telephone number, things like that. Uh, you can go check those as well. But for general purpose validation rules, go on the validation and do basically what I did. And if for some reason there isn't a method, always you can refer back to the rules. Now, filament documentation recommends to use the methods if you can, such as unique, instead of doing unique the first way, they recommend you do it using the method call, right? So if you can, always use the methods. If it's not available, then you can use the rules. And that's how you do validation, guys, in filament. Very easy to do, super simple. Just takes a few minutes to add them and it should get it done. Now, if you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to new to the channel so you get notified of the latest episodes and you also help the channel grow and in upcoming videos guys i'm going to cover more about tables and also how to handle relationships right now we're kind of hard coding these i'll cover all of that on upcoming videos stay tuned and i see you guys on the next episode have a great day bye